All right, so here is um, part two of your Yahoo Finance tutorial. Um, yay! So last part, we didn't really do much to our interface here, with the exception of making sure that we printed out the value of the closing price on the quote. Uh, I'm not sure why it's not... Oh, sorry. All right, there we go. So we printed out the value of the closing price of quote, which for some reason, oh, it's undefined because of this. Wow. Let's try this last piece. Okay. <laughs> we put out the value of the of the change in our quote that we got in real time just to show that it worked. This time we want to be able to change the field data of our graph in real time. That would be really exciting. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that. Go to the Yahoo console, developer.yahoo.com slash yql slash console. And you want to check this show community tables box. And you want to scroll down to Yahoo. Looking for yahoo.finance.historical data. Take a second and just find that. Give it a JSON format. Okay. We found it. So we want to collect data from today. Let's go back a year from today. Now, we're going to actually hard code this date into the query, but you could, of course, do this in code in JavaScript by getting today's date and formatting it like such and then placing it into this query. Uh, that's possible. We're not going to do that, though, because it's going to take a little too long. So let's just change this to today's date, the 29th. And it's going to go back in time one year. Okay. So we can just test to make sure it actually works. Sure enough, it does. So let's copy this, and we'll paste it into our YQL query. Okay. You'll notice it's similar. Select from yahoo.finance.historical data, where symbol is Yahoo. That's what company we're getting. Start date is this, and end date is this. OK, super. All right, so uh, let's just take these out for a second and check out the data structure of this because you know what? I have absolutely no idea what it looks like. So let's go, let's go check it out. Let's go here. We have to inspect element. We have to check out our console. Here's what it is. It's an object. And then let's see, query, results, quote is an array. So we definitely have to get the quote array out of here. And then it looks like each object in this array is, oh, OK, so it's also a, an, it's, it's an object, it's a dictionary. Uh, and let's just use the uh, close value for here. You could use any of these if you really wanted to, but let's just use the close value. So uh, we need to basically loop through this entire array of objects and get the close value out of it. Let's see if we can do that. So we're going to make. Uh, down here. Let's make a new variable. We're going to call it data array. Actually, let's call it something different. Let's call it stock array. That's going to be equal to data dot, how is our structure? Dot query. You have to spell it right. Dot results dot quote. Oh, nope. Not dot quote. I think it's just dot results. Oh no, it is. Sorry, dot quote. Okay, so this should make an array of all of the quotes. Let's just print out stock array. Make sure that's working correctly. We don't want to start writing our loop if we're not looping through the correct array. All right. Sure enough, it is definitely working. Great. Okay. So we're going to make a new for loop here. Let's go for. Whoa, Code Academy, or not Code Academy, what are you? Sublime Text, calm down, okay. For variable i equals zero, let's start at zero. We're gonna let i run as long as it's less than stock array dot length. And every time it loops through, we're gonna add one. There's our for loop, super duper. Let's get rid of this. So usually when you loop through objects, I like to make a variable called current object and set it equal to the object we're currently looking at. 
And then again, I like to print these out just to make sure. You should always test as you go. It's always good practice. Let's make sure that we're actually printing out the current object. Great. And we said we wanted to get the value of the close off of it. So let's get current object dot close, capital C. I think it comes in. Let's see if it works. Look at all that data. All right. Now we're cooking. OK, so uh, now we want to make sure that this calls in real time into our charts here. This is where it gets a little bit challenging. Let's go back and inspect our code for how that button works. So hmm, let's see. Every time you click the button, we call button pressed. And button pressed calls get data. OK, so this is really where our data is set. So if we wanted to make this work, we would have to call Yahoo Finance every single time we needed to switch the data. Okay. And we'd need, need to make a new array to return. With the date as a string and the value of the price as a number. Okay. So this code, this, sh this should work up in get data. Let's go ahead now and let's take this out and let's paste it up there. See if this works. And, uh, of course, we're going to make sure it's formatted nicely because we're going to write a pretty tricky function right now. Get over there. We can get rid of these commented values too. All right, there we go. OK, so here is our placeholder for data array, which we're setting down here. Now, let's see what we're trying to do. So data range. If data range equals year, well, that seems like we're probably going to have to change our query to span a whole year or half year, depending on what we do. Okay. So I think the best way to do this is to probably, hmm, it's to probably get rid of data array. And instead, change the value of YQL query. Okay, so right now, this is for a full year. We're going back one year. We should probably do 09. But if we wanted to do a half year, we could change YQL query to only go back six months to March 2014. Okay, that's fun. All right, so we don't need this anymore. Well, let's keep that and keep it as a global variable. How about that? Okay, so we're going to keep YQL query as a global variable, which is good practice. Very good. Okay. The rest of this should probably stay fairly similar. Yep, certainly should. And it looks like we need to move our return function. We need to return our request, change our request to fire after we're done collecting all the data. So we're going to put that down here. Very good. And then we also need to get rid of data array here. Now, we're going to need to make a new data array inside our return function. So, we're going to have to we're going to have to do something with it here. Let's just look at the format. Okay, good. Um, so let's see. We know our close is the current object. And we also need to get current object.date, don't we? Okay. So we need to make a new array, which is data array, and into it we need to push the values of date, push values of current object.date, and current object.close into data array. Okay. We also probably want to push them starting at index 0, because remember the first value of data array 
is going to have to be the column headers. Okay. So let's start by saying data array is going to be equal to an array of arrays. And the first value needs to be date. And the second one needs to be stock value. Oop, they should be separated by commas. There we go. OK. So our first value in our array that we're going to push into data array needs to be We need to make it current object dot date comma current object dot close. And then we need to set data array. Notice how we did i plus one because i is starting at zero and we need to start at one. We need to set that equal to pushed array. And we're going to take the return data array piece, we're going to take that out of here, and we're going to put it at the very end of our callback function. Because if we don't, what's going to happen is it's going to try to return data array that doesn't exist yet, because this is not going to run until after it's done with the query. So we're just going to put that in there. Okay, let's see if it works. I have no idea. That would be great if it did. It didn't work. Hmm. Oh, I think I might know why. It's because we loaded the jQuery at the end, which we don't want to do, because we're using jQuery up here, and it's not loading until the end. So let's put it up here. Now let's see. Okay. Seems like the query was undefined. YQL query. Data range equals here. Hmm. Oh, we have to move this query string final to after we declare what YQL query is. Let's try again. It says it's still undefined. That's awkward. Oh, same here. Oh boy. Lots of errors. That's okay. Okay. Cool. Something is not an array. What is this? It looks like the data we're passing into the chart is not an array. That kind of makes sense, I think. Let's see. Draw chart. Yeah. See, it's running draw. Let's just press the button, though, and see what happens. Not an array. What is not an array? Looks like it doesn't think that data array is an array. So let's print this out. Let's print out data array. See what happens. Data array looks like an array of two objects. Oh. oh that's the first one. Uh huh. Current object dot date. Doesn't seem to be picking this up. Is it caps? Did I really do that? Okay, great. Well, that was part of it. <laughs> okay. Um, so it looks like it's creating the array. All right. wonder what's going on. Let me pause for a second. I don't want to waste your time. So it's saying that it, you can't have a string as the value of axis number zero, which is the, uh, which is the y-axis, I think. It actually just needs one of them to be a number. So if you look at our array values, we have... What do we have? Oh, sorry. 
we have both the date and the stock value as a number. So we're just going to parse float the stock value and turn it into a number since they're both strings and that's what's throwing it off. So let's uh, take out our current object dot close from our pushed array. Let's change it to parse float current object dot close and let's save and load it up. And you have magic. That is great. So think about what you're doing here. This is like pretty deep stuff here. This is real time stock market data that you fetched and parsed and displayed however you want it. Okay, that's really powerful stuff. Um, you can have as many of these buttons as you want. All you have to do is handle their arguments and change the query right up here. I strongly suggest you play. And uh, this access down here is kind of hideous. So if we wanted to, um, since we're only getting year data, uh, you might consider changing how that's formatted. Um, you can do that through date formatters in JavaScript, but there's a lot more to do with this. However, this is the basics, and uh, it's pretty sweet if you ask me. And uh, clearly Yahoo, it's not, not doing so well, Yahoo. What's going on? I guess it's not fluctuating that much, but come on, Yahoo. All right, should we see another one? Let's see, like, apples. Oh, what just happened? They went from... Oh, you'll notice that this is today. Oh, I see. See, it's kind of in reverse order. We might want to fix that, too. Uh, but this is today. Anyway, you'll see that this transition here uh, from 625 per share to 90, Apple actually split their stock. So everybody who held Apple stock, if they held one share, they got like two or three. I don't know exactly how they split, but it's pretty sweet. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, anyway, that's, that's more than enough. So I hope you guys enjoyed and uh, hope to see some of these in your next projects. Bye!